Namaste, my second evening in this holiest of holy cities, Varanasi. This morning, we had a wonderful puja session in at the home of a, a, a personal friend of my in-laws. They have been, uh, their families have been here for generations, three, four hundred years history in their home. It was fascinating. And somehow one thing led to the other and I did a Rudra Abhishekam. The very first Rudra Abhishekam to the Kaivalya Lingam was done in Rai Bahadur's uh, Haveli, if you will, a very royal place. So there must be some significance I have not put two and two together. I don't intend to, if there is some meaning in that why that place of all places, uh, how these things got orchestrated, one will never know. Anyway, so that was there in the morning <clears throat> and this afternoon, we took some rest and again in the evening I am out here in this Asi Ghat and so hopefully today I will get a little more uh, of the evening Aarati. <laughs> Offering of lights to the river Ganges is famously called the Ganga Aarti. At around 6.30 p.m. during sunset time, every evening, beautiful sight of lamps, camphor, chants and kirtan light up the various ghats along the Ganges river. People from all over come to witness these sacred rituals. The Arati ritual consists of initial prayers invoking Mother Ganges, Lord Shiva and the God of Fire, Agni. The families who sponsor the evening prayers receive special blessings. The ritual begins with the blowing of the conscious, reverberating through the ghats. The primordial sound Om emanating from the conscious envelop the place with divine vibrations. Offering of incense sticks invoking Lord Ganesh, signifying the purification of the earth element, is the next step. Following this is the offering of Sambrani, a variety of frankincense, signifying the purification of the air element. The fragrant aroma along with the chants elevates the senses to a divine experience. Then comes the multi-tiered lamp offering to Mother Ganges, expressing gratefulness for her life-giving waters and immense spiritual gifts.
Finally, in conclusion, the celestial snake lamp lit brightly with camphor is offered to Lord Shiva, signifying a sense of unconditional surrender to the Divine Consciousness. Um, so we are um, uh, getting ready to go on a boat ride. That is east. I am in the Kedar Ghat and I'm going to be we're going to take the boat and ride along the river and watch the sunrise. So let's see. Let's see how that goes. Uh, behind me are um, some sannyasis and yogis doing their early morning yoga, practicing chants and things like that. So there is the boatman. If you see there. There he's Our boat ride along the banks of the river Ganges early in the morning can only be described as a surreal experience. The gentle slapping of the oars against the calm river, the voice of the boatman as he shared his knowledge of the Ghats, and the eastern sky slowly lighting up at dawn. All of this lifted our spirits far above the mundane and helped prepare our minds for the visit to the holy shrines of Mother Parvati, known here as Kasi Vishalakshi. We got down at the Mir Ghat to walk up to the Shakti Peet, a portal dedicated to the Shakti principle known as Mata Vishalakshi or Annapurna. At this portal, one invokes Shakti as a protective and watchful mother who never sleeps and is the source of food. This portal helps us to awaken to the Shakti principle within us that never sleeps, thus eliminating darkness and ignorance. Food, in this context, refers to the knowledge of the Self. That morning we had a wonderful and peaceful darshan of Annapurna. No cameras were allowed beyond a point and hence we could not record the actual temple or the deity. Oh, Namah Shivaya. 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 Oh, Namah Sh
We came back to the boat, our hearts filled with joy and our spirits drenched in love of the Divine Mother. So how was your experience of Vishal Lakshi? Vishal Lakshi for me has been... Uh, Happy to come back to What do I say, Sundar? Why you think, Sathya? It's just that I was looking at her eyes hmm. because she's the one who unblinkingly waited to give Bhanda Surya's Moksham. So I've been wanting hmm. to see this Devi. Um, there's something that moved within me. Hmm. That's all I can say. Hmm. So behind me is Meer Ghat. Meer Ghat is where uh, the Shakti Peet is there, Mata Vishalakshi. And so Mangala Guru and I went there. It was an amazing darshan. As soon as we entered, it was right in time for Aarti. So it was uh, kind of, again, a very good omen and uh, very peaceful, wonderful darshan. So well, it's hearts full of gratitude. We are heading back to the Asi Ghat, as you can see. This morning time is so beautiful and so, I mean, it's, it's magical here because it's so quiet and um, there's hardly any uh, people around at this point. If you think this is people, <laughs> this is nothing behind me. This is actually the quiet time. And so hopefully we'll get more of this in the next couple of days to come. Om Namah Shivaya. Coming to the heart, very heart of uh, Sanatana Dharma, the birthplace of Sanatana Dharma, if you will. What is it that I can share? And I'm inspired to share uh, what Adi Shankara wrote in Tattva Bodha. The fundamental prerequisite for a spiritual path, in our case, the Kaivalya Marga. What are the four? It's four of them. They, they call it Sadhana ch Chatushpada, Chatushtaya. Sadhana Chatushtaya. That means Sadhana means practice. And he says the four prerequisites for the practice. So we're going to explore that in uh, uh, maybe later today or some other time. And it's fascinating to see how there was a prerequisite that was expected of a student before he would enter a Guru's ashram. That is why when Yoga Sutra Patanjali starts, he says, Atha Yoga Anushasanam. Atha means now, let us start. So what does that now mean? The now in all these sutras mean and now that you are ready, now that you have practiced these four steps, the prerequisites, you have, you have kind of um, uh, passed that prerequisite, now you are entitled to learn more. So I think in the path of yoga, in the path of Vedanta, in the path of spirituality, one of the most uh, important thing is to understand how do I prepare my mind, how do I prepare myself, what kind of attitude I should have to even begin learning uh, something which speaks about the spirit right it's not religion it's about something spiritual so how do you um, and the mind can't reach there and yet mind is a tool that's a kind of irony so how do you prepare yourself uh, and it's uh, it's a very a beautiful clear-cut direction given to us by the sages and the yogis of what are the four prerequisites as they call that you need to be ready to begin the learning so let's explore that as we go along. Uh, we have just spent a couple of hours on the uh, on the um, boat ride and visiting Mata Vishalakshi. So I'm going to take a break, just digest that experience. <clears throat> and I, as you can see, we are going past the, the wonderful ghats. I'm going to walk later all the way down all these ghats. This was a boat ride, a more of a panoramic uh, experience in slow motion. So as we go exploring these ghats and as I get guided, I'll share how how it makes sense to me, how I, I uh, practice that, how I continue to practice these and how just those four pillars is what really helps me stay grounded in the path of yoga, in the path of Kaivalya.